you know, I love video games. I play video games. I like new ones a lot. They can have a lot more to them than games in the day of old. However, sometimes you just want to go back to an old classic. Like Shaq Fu. Or Shaq Fu. Or Shaq Fu! But maybe you're just a stupid kid and you don't know what an SNES is. So some companies will remake their games with double, triple, or even quadruple the graphics. Some consider this a cash-in. I consider it a chance to get a brand new yet familiar experience. Now, without any further delay, welcome to the Top 10 Video Game Remakes! Super Mario All-Stars This took the first three games and revamped them from 8-bit to 16-bit, smoothing the gameplay bit and making the music sort of... eh. I put it higher on the list of what was made for a console just one generation away. Sure, if you know me personally, you know I hate 2.5D, and I'd be pretty upset if I ended up remaking it to look just like the new Super Mario Bros. games. The thing is, it's not too spectacular in the graphics department. But Mr. Trio, I hear you say, why'd you include it if you have all these complaints? My response is, I did because I believe it's a pretty iconic remake, and it would feel weird if I didn't include it. Maybe it'll look more like a Mario World, I forgive it, but it came first so it doesn't. Also, if you want to get this game, make sure to get it with Mario World included. The Mario Advancers Not much I can say about this one that I didn't say about Smash Mouth. It's a series that remakes the original Mario games, from Mario 2 to Mario World 2. It polishes both the gameplay and graphics, and I love it. The only differences are that Mario 2 is slightly easier, there are voices, and then there's the original Mario Bros. included in each one as far as I know. I don't know, I haven't played these in a while, so everything's kinda rusty, but I assure you at least one statement is somewhat true. Kirby Nightmare in Dreamland Who doesn't love Kirby? I love Kirby, you love Kirby, everyone except Nintendo's Let's Continue series department loves Kirby. Seriously, it seems like the only thing those guys want to make are gimmicky DS games. And don't get me wrong, they're all great. But I just want to see Kirby U now rather than waiting until the console is dying to have it be pumped out on its last Christmas. Regardless, I love Nightmare in Dreamland. It's a remake of Kirby's Adventure, which introduced to everybody what the little pink marshmallow was going to do all his life. And that was sucking. Oddly enough, Sonic decided to do the exact same thing. <laughs> this game took the original and revamped it to be a lot prettier and gave it a, a lot more of a modern feel. Alright, let's be honest. Some of these have nothing to say about them that isn't obvious, but one thing that made this one great was the addition of multiplayer. This allowed two Kirbys to run around all willy-nilly, murdering everything they see. Donkey Kong for the Game Boy. Now, this can barely be considered a remake. I don't even know what to call this, really. All I know is, it's awesome. Rather than remaking a game by improving the graphics and calling it a day, or just adding a few more features, this game expands on this game spectacularly. Adding what advertisements considered 100 levels of pain to enhance the experience while also adding more moves for Mario. Maybe the only reason I'm making a big deal over this is because I grew up with this game rather than the arcade one. But I believe this is a faithful thing for the original game. Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green I HAVEN'T PLAYED THESE! <laughs> alright, alright, I understand that you shouldn't judge something you haven't played. But let's be honest, the Game Boy Advance is a huge jump from the original Game Boy, going straight from 8 to 32 in bits. These are exactly what you'd want them to be. They're red and blue with super de duper emerald, ruby, whatever, graphics and music. You know, without all the trumpets. <laughs> Star Fox 64 3D, yeah! This is one of the two remakes that Nintendo wanted to sell the 3DS with, and boy did it help. Making up for all the dinosaurs and walking Cobra and the more recent ones, they decided to release exactly what people want, pure Arwing and Landmaster gameplay. This was improved by better graphics, 3D, and not so good gyro controls. Nintendo really knew what we wanted in this case, and made sure not to forget an amazing multiplayer without all the messed up draw distances of the original game. My biggest and only complaint is the fact that they didn't include any walking or landmaster use in the multiplayer mode. 
truly really makes me think about how great it would be to have a Star Fox game made by the people behind Kid Icarus Uprising. Then again, I can always go back to Assault for its amazing multiplayer. Kirby Superstar Ultra. I'll admit, I actually didn't even know this was a remake when I first played it. I actually never played or even heard of the original. So it's not a surprise I actually thought I got a decent amount of content for a DS game. Similar to Donkey Kong, the addition of Ultra in the title is no lie. This game takes the original game and not only boosts the graphics intensely, but also doubles the amount of games, including sub-games, to a whopping 16. This adds Revenge of the King, a much harder version of Spring Breeze where DD practically snaps, upping all his defenses to ensure Kirby doesn't make it. The second one added is Helper to Hero. It's basically another form of the arena, where rather than playing as Kirby, you play as one of the many helpers available. This is actually a lot easier than the arena. Third, there is Meta Nightmare Ultra, another one where you take on the role of another character. In this game, you're Meta Knight, basically a buffed up sword Kirby who can charge his sword power to do an attack similar to Crash, heal yourself, go fast, or just spawn a helper. The toughest of them all, however, has to be the true arena. I had trouble with the normal arena, so I actually don't have this unlocked. Nor do I want it unlocked. If I had to complain about one thing, it has to be the CGI cutscenes. There's just something about them I dislike. GoldenEye Source Now, I understand that this is a fan remake, so it shouldn't count and all that. But come on, this is the only really playable version of this game to me. I know everyone's gonna hate me for this, but seriously, the original is impossible to control. Aiming is insanely slippery, making it seriously hard to hit anything from a distance. This remake, however, fixed all those problems. Sure, you still have to hold a button to have the crosshair show up, but holding it slows you down, adding a bit of strategy to aim unless you happen to know exactly where the gun will shoot, rather impressively. This is not only improves the gameplay using the Source engine, but it also remakes many models and areas from the game. They're not perfect, but they're still rather nice for a fan project. Also, don't lose your sleep. It still has paintball mode. Sonic 2 HD and Sonic Fan Remix. Oh man, oh man, these games. These games are unfinished. Yeah, it's cheating to include two and one, but they're from the same source material and they're both on the same caliber. They're both actually good enough to give me the idea for this list. Each one is good for its own reason, and here are said reasons. Sonic 2 HD is great because it's not only hand-drawn, but it's also extremely faithful to the source. The art and the music are both spectacular and really help in remaking the original to perfection. However, I heard a rumor that it has a keylogger, so I don't feel like re-downloading it and constantly replaying Emerald Hill like I did. However, Sonic Fan Remix creates its own atmosphere that no Sonic game yet has been able to create. As you wander Emerald Hill, you start seeing destruction brought onto the land. Trees are burning, Eggman flags are pounded into the ground. There's a large sign saying, I completely forgot about the time I was writing this, slowly being built in the background. It also has a better engine than Sonic 4, and is the only 2.5D game that I actually really like. You may notice how much I'm praising these, I wonder why this game isn't number one. But there's one game that's even better coming next. Right after an honorable mention! Sonic Generations. I include this game as nothing but an honorable mention because it isn't exactly a remake. Sure, it remakes a bunch of levels from other games, but it doesn't remake one game specifically, so I guess it doesn't count. This is too bad, because this game is fantastic. It remakes many levels from both classic and modern Sonic games in both 2.5D and 3D, and it's beautiful. I find myself going back to Green Hill Zone constantly just to look at the landscape. These mind-blowingly beautiful classic level remakes are made even better with a 3D TV. See every little bit of scenery in full depth. Also, Classic Sonic's gameplay is extremely similar to, well, Classic Sonic gameplay. It's all just a bit stiff and weird in a way that just brings you back to when Sega was making consoles and not just making cross-platform games.
And the number one spot goes to... New Super Mario Bros. 2! This game is an almost scarily faithful remake of Mario 3, while including Mario World bosses for whatever reasons. I can't tell you how happy I was while playing the... Alright, this isn't actually the number one. The real number one is... The first time I saw you, I knew we'd be linked forever. For you, I traveled to the four corners of the world. I faced adversity. I became a hero. Dad. I saved your kingdom. Dad. Yes, Zelda? Are you mixing me up with the princess again? Hard to say. You're both pretty magical. Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time 3D. This is a remake of the insanely popular Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. And it was popular for a good reason. This game has an excellent storyline with excellent gameplay and temples that were just exciting to go to and just... Oh my god! In 3D. All the graphics are completely revamped and they fix certain problems with the water temple without ruining the experience of the game. They made boots and the items you equip with just one button and gave you four item slots. Two operated by the touch screen. The only problem I had with it at all was just that many uh, NPC models look really awkward. As if they poured them from Nintendo 64 and left them how they were. Combine all that with the ability to play at your grandma's funeral. And you've got the best video game remake of all time.